Hi, I'm Marilyn Wolf. This is Computers as Components, Chapter 1, Model Train Controller, Class Diagrams. So, when we build a more detailed set of classes, uh, let's use some conventions. Some of the classes will refer to the interfaces, the I.O. devices themselves. And let's use the uh, convention of putting a star before that name. Right? So, star name means that this class actually represents a physical device. Okay. So now we can um, define some basic relationships using classes. What are the roles of the subsystems? Well, the console reads the state of the front panel, that's the user interface, the input side of the user interface. It formats messages, transmits messages. The train receives a message, figures out what it means, and performs the action specified by the message. So here is a set of classes for the console. We have a basic console here. There's one front panel, one transmitter. That's the circuitry that goes to the uh, tracks. And we have a formatter that, that takes information from the panel and builds a packet. So these are all software. The panel um, communicates with a class that uh, defines the, the, the front end devices. The transmitter uh, communicates with a class that um, defines the interface to the rails. We also need some classes, some roles for these classes. The front panel describes the analog knobs and the interface hardware. The formatter turns the knob settings into bit streams. The transmitter sends data onto the track. Now we also need some classes for the trains. And here we'll have a class for all of the trains together on the track. And then we'll have a separate class for a single train. So we can have up to T trains where we want T to be 8. So the train class has a receiver, it has a controller, and it has a motor interface. Okay? So the receiver um, talks to the detector, which is the physical interface, to the tracks. The controller takes a packet and figures out what to do. The motor interface talks to the pulser, which is the actual physical interface to the, um, to the engine. So the detail, we can now fill in the details with more classes and more behaviors. Let's look at how the uh, train speed control actually works. If we have a motor here, we put a voltage on it. Uh, the way we usually control the speed of a motor like this is not to change the voltage magnitude here, but to turn that voltage on and off. So we send pulses. Okay, we pick a sample period and then we change the percentage of time that that uh, voltage is on inside the sample period. So that percentage is called the duty cycle. So we, if it's zero percent, then there's never any voltage applied here. If it's a hundred percent, then the voltage is always on. If it's fifty percent, then this pulse is half the width of the sample period for the motor. Okay. Now, the, using pulses may seem strange, but remember that the motor has inertia, so even after you turn off the voltage, it keeps spinning. Now let's build some more detailed classes. We have physical classes for the knobs. Right? We've got a knob to say which train we're controlling, a knob for the set the speed, a knob to set the emergency, and a button for the emergency stop. The pulser has a pulse width for the, um, for the engine, for the motor, and a direction. We have a sender that sends a bit on the tracks, and we have a detector class that reads a bit from the tracks. Okay. Now we have classes to describe the panel that give us um, the information that was set in the knobs on the panel, the train number, the speed, the inertia the emergency stop, and we have a class here, a, a, a function, that tells us when 
these knobs were changed. And then we have a motor interface class that specifies the speed, the current speed of the motor. Okay, here's a brief description. The transmitter class will have commands to send a speed, send inertia, or send an emergency stop. The receiver class has a uh, function that says there's a new command. It has a function to read a command. It has a function that tells you what type the latest packet was. And for a speed and inertia, it gets the parameters out of that packet. The emergency stop has no parameters, so we don't need an extra function for that. And here's that description. Here's the formatter class. It remembers what the current train was. It has a um, array for the current speed and inertia of every train. And it has the emergency stop also. Okay. So we have a send command function. We have a panel activate function. And we have an operate function. Okay. So the formatter class holds the state for each train. The operate function performs the basic formatting task. It takes these values and formats a packet. So these are some classes for our train and for our console.